Oh, good afternoon. Hi, it's great to see so many of you. Welcome to the ICA. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are, of course, here to hear Gosha Rybczynski, Moscow menswear designer, photographer, speak. He today is in conversation with Alexandra Gordienko, who is also a photographer and the editor of Marfa Journal. Uh, today has been supported and organized by Angela Hill, a curator, and also who runs Idea Books. And Idea Books have published a new photozine by Gosha, which you will find in our bookshop called Crimea Kids. Um, this is a hand numbered edition of 300, and you should check it out. Um, we also will find outside the new edition of Martha Journal. Um, I, we'd also like to thank Apolitical for their support uh, of this event today. Now, it's a, a slightly unusual format um, than the normal culture now. We will be treated to both screening and talk, and Gosha and Alex have chosen to punctuate their conversation with a screening of Gosha's new work, Transfiguration. Um, this does mean we will run over the usual hour, uh, probably until about half past two. So I know some of you may be on lunch breaks. If you need to slip out, that's okay. Of course, we encourage you to stay and see uh, this incredible film, which will be split into three chapters, and the last of which will be around 20 minutes long. And then after that, you'll uh, have an opportunity to ask questions. So uh, the music that you heard when you came in was uh, Stravinsky. The Firebird Suite, and we will now start with the first chapter of Gosha's film, Transfiguration. Well, hello. Hello. Thank you for coming. Yeah. In the middle of the Friday. How does it feel seeing it on the big screen, eh? Terrified a little bit. <laughs> Good. Yeah, seeing it on the big screen for the first time is quite impressive because you know how it is on the website, it's blue screen and you just look at it and now it's a completely different environment. Okay, so it's Transfiguration. It's quite a vague name, isn't it? Why have you chosen to call your work Transfiguration? It's a project that is consists of two parts, a film and a book. It was made two years ago in St. Petersburg. And So there, there is a city, uh, St. Petersburg, and in that city there is an area which is called the New Holland, which was at some point closed for the public. And Gosha's project was basically reintroducing it to the society of St. Petersburg. Is that correct? correct? So there was a skate park, and uh, near that park, uh, there was uh, all the filming happening, and uh, that was really exciting for Gosha to be a part of this of the city and kind of a rebuilding St. Petersburg to um, to be more pro prominent in the in the cultural state. Ну и на как бы наша идея была в том чтобы То есть каждый это было в течение двух месяцев, и каждый день ребята приходили к нам кататься. For two months, and boys would be coming to the spot, to the New Holland spot, where Gosha and Gosha's team was situated, and boys would be coming and going and skating, and Gosha would be doing the filming. И в конце этого получилась книжка, которую вы можете видеть здесь, Transfiguration. Yeah, and it finished with the book, Transfiguration book, and the film. Book is cons consist of the stills of the of the of the film, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how how big was your team? How how was it the making the process of? Ну мы делали это вдвоем. Я и арт директор Паша. So it was two of the guys, their director and Gosha. И каждый день приходили ребята, которые что-то добавляли. And how long did it take you to? И что-то делали мы. Это было сразу, то есть вот два месяца мы снимали so и где-то ну месяц мы там монтировали и делали книжку layout. Yeah, yeah, I see. And how did the casting process go? Надо перевести. Uh, 
<laughs> really hard trying to like listen to him and translate and back and forth. So, so yeah, it took it took two months to kind of build the base around the new Holland spot in St. Petersburg and all the boys would be coming and Gosha would be doing the filming with the other guy who was the art director and um, after that um, the pro product was finished, wasn't it? So, and the, uh, now tell me about the casting process. How, how did you get all those beautiful boys to come, all those authentic boys? Because they're very like archetypal for the way Gosha's identity, Gosha Rupchinsky's brand identity is built. So all of them are very specific. No, in principle, community, большая, все друг друга знают, поэтому я когда приехал в Петербург уже знал парочку ребят, и в принципе ребят когда узнали, что мы открывали спот в самом центре Петербурга, это то всем захотелось как будто попробовать новое, что-то приходить скататься. So the skate community is very broad in Saint Petersburg, and uh, when everybody found out that Gosha is starting the project like that, everybody was already interested, so everybody would be coming down, telling their friends, and it, would, it was like an ongoing thing with all these amazing people coming, and so it kind of was more of a word of mouth, you didn't have to do any casting, it was just so incredible for everyone to be a part of it, so everybody was just coming down. And и каждый день приходили новые ребята, вот, и мы снимали тех, я выбирал тех, кто мне нравится, и mm -hmm. мы кого-то мы снимали с кем-то, мы просто начинали дружить, где-то гулять, как следующий герой видео. Yeah, so the following boys, Gosha would be interviewing them in the in the second part of Transfiguration, and uh, that's how it kind of builds. So you first meet the boy at the casting, and then you kind of become friends with them, and that's how the ball is rolling, and yeah. So I think we should just continue with it. Oh, one more question. You started with the saying, saying saying that life basically sucks. So do you think so? Or why have you decided to start your, your film with such a, can I just say, harsh statement? For me, this film, in principle, as any other film or book, it's a small trip from something to something. Начало путешествия такое, то есть вот такое утверждение. Okay. Мне хочется, хотелось бы начать okay. с этого. Дальше so смотрите doing дальше. Every single project basically is a journey, isn't it? So what Gosha did is he treated his journey. He start, decided to start it with quite a negative comment and kind of starting it with this statement that life sucks and it's quite hard, but then we're going to be trans transfigurating and we're going to be following and. We'll see what's going to happen in the end. Okay, let's see maybe the second part of the, of the yeah. film. <laughs> so yeah, this one was more interview-based and uh, kind of got a little bit more of a realization what you actually try to talk to these boys about. and. This part of Transfiguration finished on the face of Tolia, who was who was just skating, who is one of Gosha's friends and who kind of reappears in his work, and we all are familiar with his face, and Gosha uses his with him in the advertising and in the films and in the books. So it's just really fascinating to see how you manage to find this you know, a little bit archetypal for you characters who you who use in all your projects, which are friends on top of that. So it's just really nice to tell us more about this, like people who identify your brand. Интересная с Толиком. Когда мы делали наше первое шоу шесть лет назад, Толик вот таким же четырнадцатилетним подростком, как Максим, здесь видео пришел к нам. So six years ago, when uh, Gosha was doing his every ever first show. Uh, Tolia was 14 years old, like the first boy in the Transfiguration who Gosha is interviewing. And he's seen him growing, right? Yes, it's always like that. So, some heroes, who we film, then become our friends. I use them periodically and continue. So, it's like a big family. So, it becomes a big family. Like, Gosha uses Tolia throughout all his work since the age of 14 and it all becomes a family and they become this muses for you. So and when this guy, the younger guy Maxim, his name is, yeah? So yes. the younger guy who is now 14, 
Gosha keeps hanging out with him and he kind of becomes a part of the of the crowd of a company and uh, yeah. Ну это было тем более что три года назад сейчас ему уже семнадцать поэтому возможно появится. Actually, this guy, uh, he was fourteen years old here, the younger guy who Gosha interviewed Maxim. Now he's seventeen, so probably we're going to see him on the runway really soon in the next of Gosha's shows. We'll see, yeah, and. Um, quite interesting things that you ask your heroes in these little videos. It's quite broad and it's quite, I don't know, through these questions you kind of get this life coaching appeal, like we talk about books and we all know that readers are leaders and we talk about uh, smoking and so why is that what you kind of concentrate on? Для меня все время это натуральным происходит. То есть я спрашиваю то, что меня интересует в данный момент, то, что я вижу, никогда не готовлюсь. Это просто как вот мы знакомимся с человеком, и я да, я снимаю. So it was it wasn't scripted. It was just uh, the setup of the of the filming was that way. So boys would come and Gosha would be there with the camera, and he'll pick one of them who he finds more comfortable to talk to, and then they're just gonna chat and questions would come naturally yeah, and organically. With Maxim, то есть ребята приходили все время разные. Maxim приходил к нам каждый день кататься, проводил целый день с нами, так мы подружились. So like all different boys would be coming every day and this Maxim guy just stuck around. He would be coming every day and he'd be skating there and he just liked him and that's kind of how organically he became one of the main characters yeah. within yeah, the transfiguration. Well, he became the main character, and it's interesting to bring his thoughts to him, or something, or something, or something. By asking all the right questions, and by getting answers from these young boys who don't really know what they're doing, whose dream is to open a skate shop eventually, um, yeah, you kind of get a chance to, to portray your own vision, and... Uh, so yeah, coming back to that, so you told us that you forgot your dream, so maybe you maybe you'll remind it now for us. Так и говорю, что мечты меняются, да, посмотрим, что будет дальше. The way we saw it here, all the dreams they keep changing, and one thing you have. Я думаю, что Максиму тоже мечты поменялись с тех пор. Probably Maxim changed his dreams again now, so probably it's not a skate shop anymore. Or maybe yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, about books, so there was uh, Dostoevsky that you that you picked. Why that? Why Bessie? Have you read uh, yourself? It's случайно. Это то, что было в сумке. То, что было в сумке. Это было то, что было в сумке. Ah, so yeah, so that wasn't yeah. scripted either. So that's what actually what the little skatey boy was reading. He was reading Dostoevsky, which is quite intense. Have you read it? Yeah. yeah? yeah. What do you think? <laughs> do you read a, a lot, lot of things. <laughs> One of the things. Uh, this video. <laughs> it's actually like coming back to the friendship thing and that you have certain people who really identify your brand and stuff. We really thought that our friend Polly would be here in the audience because she's um, she's been in all the Gosha's fanzine. It's because, yeah, you concentrate on boys mainly and all the skatey boys, but then on top of that you have this specific type of a girl who you see in all of your work from the beginning to t t till now. And uh, one of the muses, I'd say, was Polly. And uh, you can see her in one of the first fanzines outside. And wh why, why is that type of a girl? Why is that kind of a girl who appeals to you? Well, in principle, I started video very spontaneously. I just shot for myself and photographs. Вот, и точно так же начал снимать видео. То есть сначала я просто снимал друзей, и вот, и потом это вот, видишь, да, 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 потом это переросло so, yeah, в какие-то... Yeah, it all started really organically, and uh, it wouldn't be, I don't know, basing it on, you know, anticipation to be screening it on the big screen. It would just be all of them hanging out, shooting each other, taking pictures, just for the home archive sort of a scenario, and uh, same with videos, and then it changed. No. Нет, ну как бы сейчас мы немного, как бы, я думаю о том, чтобы сделать что-то специальное уже, вот. А что касается выбора, то есть я всегда стараюсь выбирать героями, людей мне интересных, и а если люди мне интересны, то они становятся друзьями. Вот как бы с чем связан выбор и Поли, и Толика, и Максима. So yes, it changed, but didn't change that dramatically. Nowadays, Gosha thinks more. 
what he's shooting because he knows that potentially can turn it into certain projects. But with people, it remains the same. If people are interesting for him, he is willing to use them in their work in in his work. But organically, they became friends as well. So it's kind of an ongoing circle. You work and Просто you are мы дружим с классными людьми. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're just like friends with the really cool guys who who look perfect on the pictures <laughs> and on on screen. So it's quite organic. We just have really cool friends. I'm exactly the same. So. <laughs> Probably we should fi um, watch the last part of the of Transfiguration, and uh, then we can have some questions, and maybe you'll give us opinions. <laughs> Definitely, I quite take on advice. I really enjoyed that. That's <laughs> like all this inspirational, you know. And so. Where the styling opportunities are coming from in St. Petersburg? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> what What do you think? Why is he? Why does he have these ideas of becoming a stylist? I found it absolutely funny. TV show, скорее всего, да. Причем что он не знал, чем я занимаюсь, что я занимаюсь дизайном одежды. Мне было смешно слушать это все. So he didn't designer, and he didn't know that he had, you've done styling in the past, didn't have to. So it's just, yeah, it's all kind of becomes one big puzzle and it makes sense. Мне немножко странно смотреть сейчас это видео, потому что это было сделано два года назад. Сейчас мне бы хотелось бы все уже перемонтировать. Yeah, it was it was filmed two years ago, so now seeing it on the screen, like you want to change everything and do different cuts and do different editing for all the bits involved. Но в то же время мне нравится находить странные моменты, которые очень своевременны сейчас, как, например, кусок про Украину. Although it's really important and fascinating seeing how bits um, about Ukraine, for example, it was filmed two years ago and now it is relevant. It wasn't relevant uh, in the past. Интересные находки иногда в старых работах. Yeah, so you, you kind of go back to your old work and you see that and it, it makes so much sense again, becomes relevant. So what's your opinion on this whole Ukraine crisis now when all the, all the characters in your films are saying that there is no difference between people and that's kind of... Ну, мне сложно говорить о политике, потому что я не специалист в этом. Я стараюсь говорить то, что я могу, и вот... Как бы такими... talking about politics, and this is kind of the opinion that he can give as an artist. Я могу говорить только то, что я, ну, показывать то, что я делаю. Мне кажется, это лучший способ показать, что происходит на самом деле в России. And it's the best way to show what's actually happening in Ukraine and Russia without getting involved in all the political system and showing the way it is there that people skate everywhere, да, right? Просто хочу показать, что mm -hmm. русские катаются иногда на скейтборде не только на танках. Yeah, so Russians <laughs> skate not only on um, tanks, but also on skateboards, so, yeah, <laughs> they're not that bad. <laughs> okay, shall we, shall we go to questions, and uh, if someone wants to ask Gosha something? There is a gentleman over there on the left. Hey, hi. Um. Hey, uh, can you talk a bit about where the film sits in terms of your design and if the film influenced your design work afterwards, what, what came afterwards? Ну, для меня и фотографии, и видео — это как часть того, что я делаю. То есть я не могу отделить отдельно мои занятия модой или там одеждой. It's hard to separate, like, all this sits together — film, design, photography. То есть э, дизайн одежды для меня это продолжение э, того общения с ребятами, с людьми, с которыми меня окружают. Mm -hmm. Поэтому, в принципе, and, это все одно. And design is basically a transition of all the films and photographs and all this um, relationship that Gosha builds with his muses and boys who he interacts with. Design is just an outcome. Ну и иной раз видео и фотография может дополнить какой-то месседж, который который не не четко виден через одежду или что. From time to time, you see how films and artistic work that Gosha does developing and makes the concept complete with 
certain opinions of his that you can't see in the in the clothing. And when did this? When did it come to you? What came first, film, photography, or design? How did? Ну, мне всегда нравилось что-то документировать. Я всегда фотографировал друзей, снимал видео, но это всегда уходило в стол. Но как как тогда, когда мы начали свой бренд, я решил, что это очень хорошо к этому подходит и классно дополнять все это. So, Gosha started with uh, taking pictures and uh, filming bits and bobs of his friends and stuff, and that was always going during school, and then it was all going into the archive, and it, it didn't have really an outcome. And then through, when they started doing the closing line through that, it kind of became all relevant at some point. Do you have any more questions? Yes. <laughs> Did designing come natural to you when you decided to start doing menswear? Or was it something that you were struggling with in the beginning because you were doing, you know, photography and... Все началось с того, что когда я был тинейджером, учился в школе, было тогда у нас 90-е, это было очень два классных журнала, который назывался «Птючий ом». Я каждый день после школы, там, читал или листал эти журналы, вот, «Ом» и «Птюч». Да, и я как бы уже тогда понял, что я хочу быть вот в этих журналах, на страницах этих журналов. Когда Гоша был тинейджером, когда он в России были два магазина, которые он found fascinating. Они были called... «Ом» и «Птюч». Да, «Ом» и «Птюч». Я не знаю об этом. Какой год был это? Ну и, соответственно, когда я стал расти, я стал пытаться как-то приблизиться к этому миру, вот, и, ну, начинал с разных вещей, с со стайлинга, с каких-то тоже съемок, yeah, чего being, угодно. While being a teenager and growing up and kind of picking the career path, you tried styling and you tried doing hair, you, you mentioned yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and all that led to being a designer and a photographer and an artist. Вот, and и, ну, я всегда хотел начать что-то, связанное с дизайном, свой бренд, и м, ждал подходящий момент. И когда я встретил этих ребят, скейтбордистов, влился в их компанию, мы стали вместе проводить время, я понял, что вот это пришло время, вот это они, они герои, и про них, и у них, и для них можно что-то делать. Fashiony and arty, and somehow develop his brand, and somehow set up his brand, and those characters basically identified it. He was in the crowd of people who'd be seeing those people, and they inspired him. And that aesthetic that was around you happened to be the Gorshorovchinsky aesthetic that we all know now. Поэтому менswear, поэтому. That's why menswear. That's why yeah. because no. he was surrounded by those beautiful boys who, who really have this strong look and that that's appealing to all of us now. Но при этом всегда да, нас окружают девушки, которые готовы носить ту же самую одежду, которую носит that's одежду у своих бойфрендов. Yeah. И поэтому это также и у and нас также и в коллекциях. Because yeah. there are girls who are always keen on wearing that amazing hoodie of their boyfriends or something and that kind of all evolves into In, into a brand that is appealing to both girls and boys and uh, makes it more of a more of a concept rather than just a fashion brand. There is a question over there. In the okay. Um I read somewhere <laughs> I read somewhere that you're interested in so many things and you might stop designing at some point and um Yeah, do something else. Do you still feel like that, or not? Uh, that's that's the first question, and um, the second one. Um, it's like an observation. Like um, I felt whilst watching that that it's sort of 
a territory where only a man can be in a way maybe just because you're filming boys but um and do you feel like um you might like make a movie at some point or something like a full meter have you ever considered that Вопрос, да, действительно, заниматься дизайном в России очень сложно, и после первых трех сезонов мы столкнулись с большими трудностями, и я на год прекратил делать дизайн и сконцентрировался только на арт-работах, вот как раз это видео и книжка, это результат того. At some point, Gosha stopped doing design. He skipped a season, a whole year, was it? Yes, and he was concentrating more on photography, and this is basically the outcome of it. And the, this film, this project, was something that you were doing while you were not designing. But then still, you, in a way, felt that you have to go back to design, and you, you managed to. And um, I hope you're not, you're not going to stop designing. I hope you'll evolve with it. Именно тогда уже у меня появились мысли действительно о том, чтобы делать серьезные работы, связанные с фотографией, с видео. И действительно у меня есть идеи по поводу э, большого метра и фильма. Просто это не так легко и быстро, и нужно к этому идти. Поэтому пока нет никаких новых работ видео у моих. Э, да, потому что ты стараешься. Да, 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 And uh, when Gosha wasn't designing and he had a whole year without all the production and all the all his attention going to the design element, he managed to come up with transfiguration and managed to produce a work as big as that. And now it it, it takes time to to create a feature film. So now we don't see any small pieces by Gosha on his website. There are only two works right now, but ну, I потому что that, мы yeah. сейчас э, получили поддержку от Коум де Грассонс, и они нам помогают, поэтому я снова запустил бренд, поэтому э, как бы сейчас идет концентрация на э, развитие бренда. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ну, да, просто это идет параллельно, yeah. работа над, над видео, но оно, как сказать, все, мы сейчас копим энергию. Yeah, so, um, Now all attention is going in a way to, on uh, promoting the line and making it established. And uh, after that will come the feature film and Gosha will start concentrating on, on the... Все происходит параллельно, просто мы вот это накапливаем, чтобы что-то... Next step, next level. Yeah, it all, it all, it's all coming next to each other and it's all... It can't exist on its own. It's kind of coexisting with each other, film and art and photography and design. So, как же ты сказал, ты какой-то такой фраз сказал, что ты бы так широко из головы не успела перевести. Okay, so that's the next step. That's the next level. So quiet. Like, oh um, I just had two questions. The first one was about the music. There's like a contrast between the live kind of hardcore punk music and then your own kind of like abstract score. Uh, so just wondering how you made that music and kind of what you wanted to do with it. And then the second question was, do you consider it a skate film and were you influenced by skate films when you're making it? The skate films are... Would you mind saying it again for Gosha? Uh, so the second question was, do you consider it a skate film? Um, and were you influenced by skate films? I answer the first question about music. Every soundtrack that you hear here is all written by the same people that you see in the video. То есть это часть московские ребята, часть питерские, которые... So, all the guys who you see on screen have been participating in the, in, the, in the audio effect of it. All of them have created the music in Moscow and St. Petersburg both. Я просто хотел показать разную сцену, то есть я хотел показать и живые банды, и панк-банды, и электронную музыку. Но это все те же самые ребята из Кирбактизды. Вот это все они делают. There is past, there is electronic music, there is punk music, and there is life. Сам... 
yeah, and some indie. live indie bands. And Gosha wanted to show, you know, all the outcomes of the music scene that is relevant nowadays and in, in the New Holland, in St. Petersburg. It was natural for us. We didn't do it on different scenes. It came really naturally because it wasn't uh, created and selected. It was just all happening at that time, at that um Studio, uh, тот же Паша, который, uh, Паша, парень, который в начале видео появляется, говорит, что жизнь дерьмо. То есть он uh, yeah. сделал для этого фильма uh, live саундтрек с акустической гитарой. Я помню того человека, который сказал, что жизнь плохая в начале, 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 ну, на гитаре, то есть акустические oh, вещи. Он играл на гитаре. Какие-то акустические вещи. But now he making uh, techno, dark techno things. So it's <laughs> always. И второй вопрос, ответ на второй вопрос по поводу скейтборда, то есть. Regarding the skateboarding videos. Это, ну конечно, то как вокруг нас и вокруг меня все скейтбордисты, естественно, ну это нужно было показать что-то, но мы не хотели делать скейт видео, поэтому вы не видите здесь ни трюков, ни чего-то crazy, чего-то такого специального. Специально было, не было идеи, чтобы вообще показывать трюков, ничего такого. Feeling of it, and everybody is influenced by that, but it's not trying to be a skateboarding video in any way. It's about more the concept of it and the. Ну да, я скорее мне кажется рассказываю историю о себе или ну о том ситуации, в которой я живу, но просто ну как сказать, ребят, это мой объект моего, и через них я какие-то идеи транслирую. Вот мне кажется так. То есть скейтборд здесь не главная тема вообще. All this video is a journey of Gosha's, the transfiguration of. Of his ideas, and all the boys who we see in the films are basically tools and you know a vehicle to to portray all those ideas. And um, skateboarding is very important to it, but it's not about the tricks, about the lifestyle more and uh, the way people are transitioning. Yeah. Right? So it's just the material of of Gosha's ideas. Visually, let's say it that way. I would like to ask you about the music myself. In the first shows, you always used those old school Russian 90s bands, and then 2000 bands like Tattoo and like Nautilus Pompilius we talked about yesterday. Which even for me, I wouldn't remember those songs. But then when I would, and I would never put it on. But then when I would listen to it, I would find out that I know all the lyrics, and then. It's just really interesting how you started with all that really authentic Russian musical element, and now you're transitioning to more punk and um, indie and electronic music. Why and classical music, of course? Why? Why is that lacking th these days? Why no, uh, you think that it became less? То, что было в начале, мы делали конкретно на московскую публику, и то есть эта музыка она помогал донести какие-то идеи настроения для именно московской публики. So first shows they were targeted on the Moscow audience and that was something that really made sense for all the Moscow audience and И сейчас когда мы делаем что-то на большую аудиторию, мне хочется быть более понятным, делаю Да, да, да. And when now there is a broader audience, it's Gosh is making a decision to find some other audio element that would be more appealing to everyone else rather than just people who grew up in Russia. Ну и тем более мне всегда интересно просто показать большему количеству людей то, что делают мои друзья, то есть работы моих друзей показать всему миру. Если это могу. Это замечательно. And on top of that, what is really important is the support to all the friends and because all these boys who Gosha photographs and who he lives with and who he gets inspired by, if all of them are making music, it's it's quite a wise and nice good move to portray it and to show it to the bigger audience so everybody can hear what they're up to. Yeah, so that's nice of you. Uh, do we have any more questions? Because after that we probably will 
we'll see the last part of the of the of the transfiguration, which is we won't see it, we will hear it, which is one of the bands. We we wondered whether now would be we could invite everyone to just join us in the bar. In the bar, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, an absolute huge thank you so much for you all to, uh, for coming, and thank you to Angela Hill. But mostly, um, join me in congratulating and thanking Gosha and thank Alex. Thank you. Thank you for coming.